Hi everyone. So yeah, uh, I think most of you would have thought why I fucked up was because I have so many hyphenated words in my profile. Uh, but that's not the reason why I fucked up. <laughs> there are a lot more other reasons. I am good at multitasking, so that works in favor. Uh, so today I'm just going to share about my uh, all the fuck ups almost that I've done in my life, very short and sweet. And uh, this is actually my second event that I've attended and I came here, I think the previous one, and then I said I have to share my story. People have to know <laughs> what are the stupid fuck-ups that I've done. So that actually shows the light of the end of the tunnel. There is light, definitely, and I'll tell you why in my last slide, because I can see light now and I'm actually in that light. So um, my story is a very, uh, very Hollywood film or a Bollywood film story. So I was... Born as a princess, was raised as a princess. Everything was my dad and my mom and our family. And then one fine day, everything came crashing down. My dad just passed away. We didn't have any money. I didn't have a house for a while, and so on. So I've been through all of that, and I was 15. So all of that went there. My mom and I pulled through that, and all that kept me going was education because I was really good at what I did, and I love science. So from the time that I know that I was aware of what I wanted to do in my life, I wanted to do something in relation to science. Wanted to be a doctor, it didn't work out, fine, that's the first fuck up. And then, because we didn't have money, first thing, okay. So that's the first fuck up. And then I said, okay, let me go on and do something else in science. And life has always been like this. It's been roller coaster ride, up, down, sideways, thrown here into the ditch, up, and then suddenly down. It still keeps happening every day of my life. So this is how it's been. And like I said, education is the only thing that kept me going. And I very well remember this quote when I was about 15 years old, I read this and uh, from Nelson Mandela and he said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I didn't want to change the world per se, but I at least wanted to change the life that I was living in. And um, it kind of changed when I met my now husband when I was 15. So it's been 20 years since we know each other. And now you know my age as well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> actually I'm only 32, so I met him when I was 12 actually, but we fell in love when we were 15, so we were married, we had, oh yeah, <laughs> well there are a lot of fuck ups there as well, so, <laughs> so yeah, so, like I say, science is in the air that I breathe and in the air that you breathe, it's in the room that you're sitting in, it's in the food that you're eating, it's everywhere, so science is everything. So based on that, I went on to do a bachelor's and then a master's and then a PhD in Singapore. And 2009 when I moved to Singapore was when I was a rebirth, like a rebirth, like life started becoming better. I could bring my mom here, I started earning a bit to support ourselves, we had a stipend. I got a degree which is a PhD, I got a doctor in front of my name even though I can't do a surgery or save your lives, but I can save an animal's life. So uh, that's how it started off with and then went down the traditional path of being a scientist, a researcher, lab rat, staying in my lab coat, living in the lab, doing all the experiments. It's not as nice as you perceive it to be the way they show it in YouTube and everything. It actually sucks. So, <laughs> so then um, in 2014, um, my, uh, my friends, two of them who we did PhD together, we all were frustrated with life. We were like, now we've finished our PhD, we've been through all the hell that we can be through. And uh, now we have our full-time jobs, but what are we gonna do? What else shall we do? I mean, we're <laughs> capable of doing other things. So for me, business startup was like a new field. Like I had no clue about it. I, for me, it's like having a job, getting my paycheck every month, I'm happy, I love traveling, I love shopping, I'm gonna do that and live life happily. And 2014 was when my son was about uh, nine months old and I've, I had a very, uh, I had a fuck up there as well because my son was really sick once he was born. So that was a very bad nine months. My pregnancy was great but after he was born it was like why did I give birth to my son? It was like that. So that was a very down time for us. And um, my husband is a businessman. So I always kept thinking that business is for my husband. I mean you know, he's on the phone all the time, he's on the internet all the time. He's He's working like 24 hours, I don't want to do that. I love sitting in the lab and working 24 hours. But then he kept always telling me that, you know, be your own boss. Stop complaining about your boss. Be your own boss, uh, do something on your own. That's what's going to keep you, you know, sustain you throughout your life. I said, well, okay, let's see. So uh, friends and I were like just sitting and chatting and then we said, let's do something together. 
start it didn't start off so easily but then yeah we had a few ideas that we came up with all of them were like we did all of it and then our friends husbands are actually like my husband is a businessman her husband is a businessman as well and they said well it's not going to work so ditch that and then the next idea ditch that and then finally we came up with this idea which is actually a news website to talk about health news in simple english for everybody to understand it doesn't have to, you don't have to know science or you don't have to know the jargons of medical terms to understand so the next question was okay we have started off the website we started earning a little bit of money here and there we started getting ads we got good traction initially and then the next question was um, investment so we went on to talk to some investors and the first question was well you have a full time job so we don't want to invest in you and i said well i don't think that should matter because our team is there and we're doing a good job and they just kept telling no we are not going to unless you leave your job we are not going to uh, spend money on you so that's when the question came as to whether i go on to the risky startup or i stick to my job so like i said in my life i've had times when i didn't have a roof over my head i said that's never going to happen to me especially with my son and my husband and everyone there so i said no i'm not going to give up my job i can do this as well at the same time so let's go on so we went on put in our own money and that's the website by the way it's called biotech in asia so the main reason we started off was we felt that the media was feeding people wrong health care news so we said okay let's make the wrong right not the best idea at times because uh, people love clickbaiting you know you love reading headlines that are awesome like oh cure for cancer and then you go click on it and then you find some bullshit under it you know so we started saying uh, you know stuff like if you down regulate this gene cancer will be cured nobody wants to look at it you know what gene what down regulation like what is that so along the way we learned how to market stuff to people but without doing clickbaiting and we still don't do it the business is still going on the website is very much there but i'm not a part of it anymore i'm st i still write sorry i still write that's another fuck up anyways i still write but uh, i i don't manage the company um, so you know there's this gut feeling that you have in your in your stomach that when you start something um, and i had i have this feeling any time i do anything because with all the failures that i've had in my life it's like if i'm going to start something it's going to fuck up i know for sure and i know i can get through it as well so when i started off with biotech in asia itself i had a feeling that things are not going to go down the right way but i kept pushing for it and um, these are the lessons that i learned from it first thing never start a business with your friend <laughs> especially if it's your best friend yes never do it i'm never doing it again never start a business with your husband or wife as well unless you want to have a divorce so yes so if that's your end goal then go ahead that's the best way to have a divorce actually instead of fighting other ways next thing never do a 50 50 partnership that's the worst thing that you can do you're in a deadlock situation each each of you have different opinions or i mean i mean don't do an equal partnership among, among partners never do it i never knew no, nobody told me all of this by the way so you know 50 50 partnership you are in a deadlock she wants another thing he or she wants another thing you want another thing you're just stuck there your company is going down and you're like nowhere to go the next thing is please do hire a legal representative okay that's representative sorry for the typo but yeah do hire or at least get a person who can help you i know legal fees are extremely high in singapore that's the main reason we didn't go for one and then we ended up you know getting advice and i wouldn't call it advice but whatever you call it i you know those pointers from people who think that they are lawyers there are people like that out there <laughs> so you know those people come to you and then they are like you know pushing you and you kind of like okay he's you know he's probably done an mba from a very you know big institute okay let's listen to him don't do that and the next thing is when you go for the registration so acra is like the place where you register your company in singapore it's actually a one hour process you can do it online from your home that's that's what i love about this country be sure of who your partners are who how many shares each partner holds and what they do yeah you can understand where i fucked up for that so yeah so that's how i kind of felt but i still kept swimming up and up with that heavy ball and then you know eventually two years down the line i you know started feeling that okay there are different visions Uh, we're going either ways, and then uh, you know we're going opposite directions. 
and each of us had different passions. Our passions took over everything, and we started, you know, uh, looking at how we can be uh, amazing in our startup. Ra uh, sorry, rather than how I can be amazing in our startup, rather than we can be amazing. And then, you know, started becoming like one of them was getting the fame, the other one wasn't, and all of that happened. And this is exactly what happened. So we eventually, uh, I decided to divorce and get, get out of the relationship from the startup. But uh, it, wa it was quite amicable in that sense because I didn't want nothing to happen to the company basically. So the company is doing great, it's still there, the website's there, it's going on, it's still right for it. Um, but the thing is, like I said, the business was like that and then the personal was exactly like this. And my husband told me one day, I think uh, you and I will split if this goes on, so better you split from there. So I said, okay, I can't lose you, I know you for 20 years. So yeah, that's where we kind of decided. But a good thing that happened is like, you know, my husband keeps telling me this, that change is the only thing that's permanent, which is perfect, because that's the only thing that's there. And what I decided to do is step down. So I said, okay, I'm going to step down. It was hard. It was really hard. I mean, you know, I started off with such passion to talk about people, about health and awareness and all of that, and I had to give it up. But then, I, like I said, I still write, so it's okay for me. But then what happened is, I'm this kind of person, like if I meet 10 people, I'll have hundreds of ideas from that, like from one conversation that I've had with you. And my phone uh, is like my notepad, I just keep writing down all my ideas. And I, then I go back and then think about it and then look at which would make sense to go forward with and so on. So I had these set of ideas that I wanted to incorporate in the previous company, but that didn't happen. So I just opened another one with those ideas. So I had hundreds and then came down to five. So for people who are not from the science might not understand this, but it's just a community website. It's a community building website where uh, scientists and people in the science can come together and learn from each other. And what I do is uh, coordinate with other education companies to see how they can bring science into the curriculum of students and so on. Um, and like I said in my PhD, like all of us during PhD, we have had a lot of fuck ups. So basically we share our kind of stories here and then we have like ratings of the laboratories that we have worked in and so on, which our professors aren't happy about. But anyways, but the good thing that I was telling you that I can see light at the end of the tunnel is I just got some funding. So yes, you can clap. Yay! <laughs> so, and this time, the, the investor was not bothered about all of us having full-time jobs. We are four people in the team. All of us have full-time jobs. All of us are in different parts of the world. None of them are in Singapore, like except me. And they're not my friends first. Now they're friends. But uh, it started off like that and just received minimal funding. So keeping our fingers crossed that it would do well. Um, and just wanted to leave you with this message saying trust your gut always yeah that's all